submit to this one? Well, saints, praise the Lord for his faithfulness to his church. Um, uh, I really enjoyed in our Lord's table, in the, in the, uh, in the worship to the Father, I, was it the final hymn or next, the, last, the, the last, next one, that through all the changing seasons, through all the trouble, sorrow, woe, um, nothing changes his affections, it says. Love divine will bring us through. And, and uh, what was in my heart was that actually love divine has brought us through. Has brought us through. Has brought us through personally and has brought the church through all these years. All these years. We didn't have the time, the brothers, nor was there the particular burden to detail so many... Uh, so many storms that we have passed through corporately, we ourselves here in the church life, even from the beginning. Because, because and, and it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be strange to us. It shouldn't be strange to us because the Lord said, I will build my church. When he promised this, I will build my church in Matthew 16. The very next thing he says is, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Uh, which, which is a wonderful promise on one side, but it's also a, a kind of a warning that we should always realize the enemy will, will contest the building of the church. The enemy will always contest the building of the church. But love divine has brought us through Amen. until today, and here we are. And, and of course, of course, it, uh, we, we were somewhat reminiscing in these days. Uh, do you recall when we had the, uh, the first semi-annual celebrations of the church? Uh, I remember one time we had this whole room opened and many saints here. And then I, I think we were, we were connected with Hall 3 in Flushing, maybe. Because we don't, we, as Brother Sam said, we don't all fit here. We don't all fit here. Um, but it was a joy at least to see all the saints in the different halls. Isn't it wonderful, saints, that, that there are saints gathered right now throughout the city in, 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 in such a way. And uh, even though we're, we, we can't be together physically, we're one body, we're one church. And the Lord has his testimony here. And so, um, as our brothers mentioned, according to the Lord's leading uh, of the brothers, uh, beginning from, from 2015, there was this kind of definite leading that the Lord began to, to give year by year. And we can see, we can see that we're still in the very first speaking of uh, 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 advancement and enlargement. We're, th it's not that, okay, that's done for the year, and then we go to the next one. Each of those points, re which really we, we feel uh, came from the Lord's heart, for his, for his church here. Um, we, we, are, we are still under the Lord's blessing of each of those points. And thank the Lord for this. Thank the Lord for this. So we would like to have a little fellowship to introduce to, to all the saints the direction for, for, for this year as, as for these past couple of months. Uh, the brothers have been just before the Lord and, and having much fellowship. And I, w I want to write these three phrases uh, on, on the board here. And this is the first time I get to write on the board in two years. Yeah, praise the Lord. And, and so, so the first one, the first one uh, actually is the one I have the most burden for. Uh, and this... Rekindling, rekindling, okay? This is, this is like a, a fire, a fire. And so the verse that we want to, that goes along with this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, oh, sorry, chapter 1, chapter 1, Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 6. That's the verse in which Paul charges young Timothy, fan into flame. Fan into flame. Okay, uh, I'll come back to this. The second is a familiar term, but we do feel the Lord is speaking. Oh, no, no. Oh. Yeah, 
no eraser. It shows that we haven't met in person. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, I came ready. Yeah, is this to me? What's next? Yes, for you. To me, for you. And this comes from Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 2. The stewardship of the grace which was given to me for you. And then the final, uh, actually we're coming back to one that we've had before. Growing. Growing. And by this we imply growing in life, each of us and all of us. Growing in function. Growing in function. Brother Sam mentioned about these new halls. It's, this is our experience. Whenever we have a new meeting hall, there are many opportunities for the saints to function in ways they never did before. And th this is surely the case when, we, when, when some of us went to Manhattan in 2003, and so many of those young adults, they never served in, this capa in these capacities before. But you know what? Through the functioning, even of the practical services, I think many of us can testify on their behalf, they grew. They grew in life. They, they matured in the Lord by their growing in function. And they, they go along together. You know, little children, little children in a family, you give them responsibilities according to their growth in life. So the life and the function uh, goes together. And then the third, again, in numbers. And it's not that, not that we focus on numbers, but the numbers are actually very often an outflow of the growth in life and in function. And for this, the verse that we like to propose is Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15. Holding to the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things. So I want to come to this uh, point on rekindling. Rekindling. It, it, is, it is surely an encouragement, I believe, to all of us that even in these two years where all of us saints, actually not just, not just we, of course, every, every, everyone on the planet, everyone on the whole earth has been facing this situation. And uh, we went into a kind of a lockdown situation in New York City. Do you recall that? Uh, on March, I believe it was March 20th, 2020. And um, uh, our, I think our, our uh, f the, the first time that we canceled a meeting here uh, and, 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 and started on this thing that many of us had never heard of before, what is Zoom? And now we're very proficient in this. Uh, that, may have, that may have been around March 12th, around March 12th or so, somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, and... and um, uh, the, the meetings, we, we began to be isolated. We began to be isolated. And uh, only meeting in this kind of a way, and, and our meeting life changed. Our work life changed. Uh, school changed for all the children. Um, it seems like everything, everything was, was changed. And uh, it is not, uh, we, we, we cannot uh, underestimate the, the impact uh, the, uh, that this has, has uh, you know, uh, had on society, but including our brothers and sisters, our saints, and on, on the children, on, on the young people, on the college students, on the, on the young adults, on the young families, on the young families, actually a great effect on many young families with young, with young children, but also on the middle-aged saints, on, and on the elderly saints, yes, elder, many of the elderly saints, Zoom, the computer, they're, they're, they were afraid. They, they're intimidated, feeling, oh, they'll be lost without the in-person meeting. So we had this burden of all ages. We have to take care of all ages. If we're really the, the, the church, if we're really God's family, we have to take care of, of everyone. But I just worship the Lord for his move in the body. Uh, among us, his leading. So many saints rose up. I remember specifically with the, with the elderly saints, 
um, some brothers were burdened to purchase actually tablets, purchase tablets, quite a number, dozens of tablets, and load certain programs with the, the Bible, with, with how, to, how to get on, on, onto Zoom with one or two, you know, buttons. And, and then, and then uh, these, these saints actually went, traveled the city gifting these to the saints and having a little tutorial for them to show them how to get, oh, the joy, oh, the joy of these saints. When, and and t till today, many of these saints are the ones who are most faithful in the meetings. Just like always, just like always, the most faithful ones in, in the meetings. So, so uh, there, there was this, and, and uh, also, also what was mentioned about the purchase of the two new halls. Isn't it wonderful that the church did not, we, we, we did not kind of just go and hide. We, there was advancing, even in these two years. And, and especially the, the purchase of these, these two places. And, and uh, too bad we don't have the, the facility to, to have the two-way. I just like to, to say, saints in Hall 6 right now, <laughs> on the Upper West Side, praise the Lord. Amen. I'd like to hear, well, we can't hear you, but the Lord can hear you. How about all the saints in Hall 6? Praise the Lord. We can praise the Lord with them. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. There they are. May the Lord bless your new beginning. Amen. May the Lord bless your new beginning. We were able to be with them a couple of weeks ago in one of the final meetings at the Franciscan Center and share a word of encouragement to them. And we, we do trust the Lord will really take them on. And they'll have this opportunity to grow in life, in function, and in, and in numbers. That, that many seeking ones will find that little location, that little location, 38 West 96th Street, as, as a kind of beacon of light and hope to that area of the city. People are searching. People are searching. One, one positive effect of the things that have gone on in these last two years is that people's worlds have been turned upside down, including our brothers and sisters, the Lord's children. And, and many are searching, searching for fellowship and searching for the truth. We have to be ready. To, to just present our, the riches the Lord has, has blessed us with. Now, and also Hall, hall 4, where the, the, the meeting hall is purchased there in Brooklyn, and uh, things are being prepared for them. We want to bless their new beginning as well. But saints, in spite of the fact that things have, the Lord has cared for us, his love has brought us through up till today, we do feel, we do feel that there still needs to be some rekindling in certain areas of our lives. There still needs to be some rekindling. There, there, there needs to be a kind of a jump start. Do, do, you, do you know what I mean? You know when your car dies? It, it do doesn't mean the battery is totally dead, but it's, it's, it's got something in it. But it, it needs another car to come in you know, get it, get it going. A little, we call it a boost, right? And, and then, you, can, and then you, can, you go forward. Then you go forward. And so, you know, it's very interesting as we were fellowshipping about this, this point, this need, and uh, for ourselves, for the church life, concerning different services in the church, concerning certain practices in our daily life, which, which may need a little strengthening, uh, which have been affected by all the things. Um, as we were searching, what, how, how do we express this to the saints in a good way? And then one brother, one brother suggested this word rekindling. And so, of course, we thought of this verse, 2 Timothy 1.6. And so, and so, something very interesting uh, to me, uh, you know, this verse, one, one, uh, 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul says, I to fan into flame, fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. But then we discovered that actually Darby translates this verse. Darby, you know Darby in the new translation, his new translation, doesn't say fan into flame. You know, the King James says, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. But Darby says, 
rekindle the gift. Oh, this was a kind of confirmation uh, to us. And then I'd like to read to you, I'd like to read to you the amplified version of, of, of this verse. Yeah, this is uh, 2 Timothy 1.6. That is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers, fan the flame, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you, by means of the laying on of my hands. <laughs> so it says, I would remind you, the well, saints, I would like to remind you this morning. Stir up. Rekindle the embers. Fan the flame. Keep burning. The gift of God, the inner fire. That means, saints, there's something in you and there's something in all the saints. The fire has not been quenched. Don't believe that. The fire has not been quenched. You know when you have the embers and they've been lit already and it seems like the fire went out? Actually, the fire is inside the ember. And it just needs some fanning. Just some fanning. A little blowing. A little blowing. Oh, I tell you, how could anyone come to this Lord's Table meeting? I, saints in the other halls, I don't know what your Lord's Table meeting was there, like this morning. But how could someone come to a meeting like what we had this morning and not be fanned into flame? I mean, I mean, from the first song, I think from the first prayer, there was a blowing, there was a fanning. Oh, the Lord rekindled our love for him. And I'd like to... to uh, uh, we, we didn't sing this hymn this morning, but we sing this hymn in the Lord's table often. Hymn number 40. You, re, you, you know this one? Uh, uh, we praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love. Verse 4. Verse 4. We praise thee again. We are filled with thy love. And each heart is rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah. We can't have time to sing it. Amen. Each, each heart is rekindled with fire from above. And saints, that's the first thing that has to be rekindled. Actually, this needs to be rekindled every day. But I do feel, after these two years, now really 23 months under this kind of situation, there are some areas in our heart and in our lives that need some fanning. They need some fanning. You know, there, uh, oh, well, let me, let me, uh, one, one last point on, on, just on this word. You know, in the Greek, in the Greek, th this is a very interesting word. F fan into flame, or, or rekindle, or, or stir up, this word. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it in, in Greek. It's something like this. Anazopureo. Anazopureo. It's actually made up of three words. Very interesting. Three words. What, you know the three words? The three English words are, again, living fire. Which means, make the fire living again. Make the fire living again. How do you do that? Fan. Fan. You got to fan into flame. And I do believe the Lord wants to do that in each of our hearts. And again, the first thing that needs to be rekindled is our love, Amen. our love for him. But saints, one way for sure to rekindle the love is to come together, to be together. When we're together, when we're together, maybe you're a little cool this, the, 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 you know, this week, and, but the rest of us fan you. In the next meeting, I, I come a little cool because of all the things, but I, I just present myself and you fan me and we fan one another into flame. So saints, we, we have to be together. We have to be together. And, and yes, yes, it, uh, 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 the Zoom features, you know, that, that, that kind of meeting has served a purpose. And I believe to some extent will probably continue to serve a purpose for, for you know, go, going forward.
Because especially, especially for elderly saints in weather like this that we're having, to, have, to continue to have the prayer meetings online, it's the way for them to all participate. And so that's no problem, no problem. But saints, I just want to uh, maybe fan a little bit this, our meeting together in person, our meeting together in person. Be careful, be careful that, that we don't fall into a custom, the habit of not meeting. Remember Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10? Uh, there, actually, I, I, I really want, I want to read, not, we usually use 25 for assembling together, not forsaking the assembling of, of ourselves together. But, but I, I, want to read, I want to read verse uh, 24 uh, before that. So, uh, yeah, Hebrews 10, 24 says, And let us consider one another so as to incite one another to love and good works, not abandoning our own assembling together as the custom with some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day drawing near. And dear saints, particularly in these last two years, there is just an increasing sense among so many of God's children, not just we, that, that the day is drawing near. The day is drawing near. So in these days, which we, we just have this sense, the end, we're at the end of the age. That, that all the more we need to consider one another. And what? Incite one another. You know, this word incite is also very interesting in, in, in the Greek. This, this word incite, it could have two uh, translations or I interpretations. It could be stimulate. That's positive, right? Stimulate. It could also mean irritate. Depending, depending on the context. <laughs> Stimulate or provoke in a good way. Or irritate, which means to provoke in a not good way. And saints, we, we have to be careful in the church life. Especially with our words. With our words, we might think we are stimulating someone, but actually we're irritating them. So we have to be careful. We have to make sure that the, the, the response that, that we want is love. Love. That whatever our encouragement would be would just cause that person to love the Lord more. That's what we want. That's what we want. But here in Hebrews, it does seem the one way to be incited to love specifically to love. You get stirred up to love and then to have good works out of that love. From what? Not abandoning our own assembling together. So uh, I'm just saying be careful not to, not to fall into a habit of not being together. We, 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 ha we have to be careful. Even things are legitimate and we Respect that, we understand that, but still I would say, find a way. <laughs> find a way to be together with some saints, whether that means in a group meeting setting, whether that means even to be together for some meals, to have fellowship together, or that means come together for the meeting. Find a way, because it is our experience. When we come together, we are incited to love and good works. So, saints, we, we, need, we do need to pray for, for one another. You know, in, in um, of course, in, in the uh, Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, where it's talking about the, uh, the, the history of the church, right? In, in, in that prophetic history, uh, according to the seven churches in Revelation. Well, I think we all know this. The, the, the first point in the degradation is what? It's the loss of the first love. 
loss of the first love for the Lord. We want our love for the Lord to, to be in its freshness every day. But you know, saints, the Lord Jesus in Matthew, Matthew 24, he talked about the, there could be factors that cause our love for the Lord to grow cold. And we have to be on guard. He, only, he talks about one factor there. This is Matthew 24, 12. It says, because lawlessness is multiplied, the love of the many will grow cold. The King James Version, I believe, says wax cold. It, it gets cold. You know, that's like, that's like when you have uh, maybe some bread out of the oven or a cake, and then you put it on the counter and leave it there to cool down, right? You, to cool down so that you can serve it because too hot, people can't eat it. Okay, so you don't put it under, usually, at least, at least I, 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 I don't normally see my wife put a fan there to cool it off. Just, you just put it on the counter. And what happens? Just the air. Just the air, the, the room temperature. Or a, a, a kind of a breeze cools it down. Cools it down. Uh, there, has, there has been in these two years that kind of cooling down factor in our society. Be careful, brothers and sisters. We have to be careful. Lawlessness will increase in our society. That's, that's the prophecy. That's the prophecy. In, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it warns us, the Lord pre-warns us that the mystery of lawlessness will operate until the day that the man of lawlessness is manifested. So, so yes, we, we pray, and we, we pray particularly, Lord, Lord, preserve this nation for your purpose. Actually, in these weeks or months, we've had this as our burden. Lord, preserve this nation for the gospel and for your testimony. And according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, we should pray for those who are in high position, right? The, the, the president, the governor, the senator, senators, the mayor. We should pray. Who should pray? Regar regardless whether you voted for them or not. <laughs> As a believer, we should always pray for those in authority. Why? With God's economy in view. And what does it say in, 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 in 1 Timothy? that we might be able to live a quiet life in godliness and gravity. Godliness and gravity. We're, 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 in a sense, we're not praying for world peace. We're not. We're praying, Lord, your testimony could go on. That the saints could still gather together safely. That, you, that the gospel could still go out that believers could come and enjoy the riches in your house. We pray, we pray in this way. But even as we pray that, don't have a fantasy that, oh, everything's going to be better. Uh, actually, the Lord told us, the Lord told us, the mystery of lawlessness, which is now operating until the one who, who moves out of the way, it talks about the one, we don't know who that one is, but it, it sure seems that some years ago, that one began to move out of the way. And lawlessness is just more manifested every day. And it will continue to be so. But saints, we must be on guard for what? That that, that situation would affect my heart. Our love for the Lord. Our trust in the Lord. Our trust in the Lord for our family, for our children, for the saints. We have to stir up our love for the Lord. We have to rekindle the love for the Lord and, in Hebrews, consider one another. Not just me. We should consider our brothers and sisters 
around us. And so I also feel, uh, saints, that in the church life, the, especially now with these new halls, we, we, we now have nine buildings where the saints can come together and even clean the hall together. Oh, you know, this, this may seem like a trite thing, I tell you. The blessing throughout the decades of having the service to just come and clean the hall together. Saints, don't miss these opportunities. There needs to be a rekindling of the zeal for the church services. For the church services. Let's pray for this. Let's pray for this. Let's pray for the children's meeting service to be established in such a way that the children can come together. Let's pray for this specifically. Let's pray for the young people, that the young people's meetings can be fully reestablished, that the saints can come together. You know, for the fire, the embers must be together. If, if you spread the embers, the fire, the fire goes, goes out. Let's pray for these areas. We don't have the solutions and the ways and particularly, but let's pray. The Lord will show us the way. In, in district by district, meeting hall by meeting hall, the Lord will show us the way. And as long as we endeavor to always keep the oneness of the Spirit in the uniting bond of peace, the blessing is waiting for us. Blessing will continue to flow. Oh, let, let, us, let us pray for this. Now, um, just a line or two about, about this one and this one to me for you. Um, uh, saints, we, we all, we all are members in the body. We all have those around us that if we have the heart, we can minister Christ to. From the youngest one to the oldest. From the youngest one to the oldest. Our, our hope is that all of us would, would be before the Lord. That, that the, the, this part of to me would never be interrupted. That we would be so strengthened in our personal fellowship with the Lord every day. Every day. You know, I, I was so happy recently, uh, Brother Sam gave us the statistics for our website and also the app. You know, we have the church app now. And, and I, I was very happy to see the number of uh, downloads we get or visits, you know, to, to the morning watch. Actually, that's the biggest one, right? That's the biggest, that's the biggest one. Saints, saints getting the verses for the fellowship with the Lord. That, that's, that's really wonderful. Let's, but let's pray for this. Let's pray for this. That even all of us would be perfected more and go deeper in our fellowship with the Lord. And, and uh, also for your prayer, we hope that, that you would pray for all of the brothers taking responsibility in all the meeting halls of the church. You know, we have, we have more than 130 brothers who coordinate together to help in, 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 in the nine meeting halls. Pray for the brothers. Pray for the brothers. And we've begun, actually yesterday, we began to have a series of meetings uh, with, of different groups of brothers to, per, to, to do our best to perfect them in areas of service. So pray for the perfecting that all of us, all of us, would, be in, would have some advancement in to me and an advancement in for you, right? We, we have the burden to gather the brothers who, who share the opening words in, in, the, in, in the meetings to, so that we all can improve in our ministry of the word to the saints, even in the group meetings and in the gospel. So let's pray for this. Let's pray for this. And I think uh, we said a little bit about the third one. Um, you know, we asked, we asked uh, that in the, in the nine halls, the young people could join us today. And uh, so I, I, want, I want to close actually with a word, something for the sisters, something for the children, and something for the young people. <laughs> 
Um, because actually, even there are some children in, in, in some, some, of these, some of these meetings. We recently had a, a, uh, a training, uh, a crystallization study training on the books of First and Second Samuel. Quite a number of us participated in that. And, and uh, we will be reviewing that in, in s some time. I think we're really enjoying the, the, our, our study of Philippians, right, in, in, in these days. After Philippians, I believe we're going to Colossians, right? And then I believe we're going to Samuel after that. So we'll come back to, to, to those. But, you know, Samuel, I just want to say a brief word concerning the books of Samuel. You know, their placing, their placement in the history and what they mean for us today. Because remember that in 1 Corinthians 10, it does say that everything that occurred, happened to Israel happened, what, as an example for us. And the things were written for our admonition, and it says specifically in 10.13, 1 Corinthians 10.13, written for our admonition to whom the ends of the ages have come. So we at the end of the age must pay attention to that picture in the Old Testament. Those are not just stories. They mean something to us. And what do we see in First and Second Samuel? What we see is some persons being raised up by the Lord, cooperating with the Lord to turn the age to the age of the kingdom, to bring in the king, which in that place was David, to bring in David's reign. And, and of course, David from, from so many t places in, in the Old Testament and New Testament, he's a type of... Christ, even from the first page of the New Testament, we know that, that David, David is a picture of, of Christ. And who do we see in Samuel? <laughs> we see a sister, we see a child, and we see a young person. <laughs> and they each cooperated with the Lord they each cooperated with the Lord to bring in the kingdom. And the first one we see is a sister, Hannah. And what was she doing there? She was pouring out her soul before the Lord. And eventually, she, she was praying for her own need. But somehow, this young girl touched the heart of God and, and had this kind of speaking to God. God, I have a need, but I know that you also have a need. So how about this? I'm paraphrasing very much. How about this? You meet my need, and in meeting my need, I will help meet your need. And that's Samuel. How did this young Sister, this young one among the Israelites, have this kind of thought, but she did. She even says that she will, she will lend her child to Jehovah all the days. Like, like God needs a loan. God needs a loan. I'll lend him. She doesn't say give. I'll lend him to you all the days. Sisters, your role at this time is more than critical. How the churches how the churches need the sisters, particularly the young sisters with the children, to, to cry out to the Lord and pour out their souls to the Lord. And in Psalm 62, 8, it says, pour out your heart before him, that we would, you would pour out before him. But in the principle of Matthew 6.33, I'm seeking first the kingdom. I'm seeking first the king. Lord, I'm praying for my need. I'm taking care of my children. But I'm seeking first the kingdom. So Lord, come and meet my need. But I hope that as you meet my need, I, my family, my children, we can meet your need at the end of the age. Oh, sisters, we, we need the Hannahs. We need the Hannah ministry 
in the church in New York City. We need sisters with this kind of heart. And we have had, through these decades, oh, I do hope, I do hope, all the young sisters would aspire to this and even follow the patterns of so many that have gone before you. Then the children. There's a child here, Samuel. We see him as a child who just loves God and, and wants to hear God. Even the children can play such a role, such a role, to have a heart for the Lord. I don't know if the, the children who are in, in this meeting, if you realize how often we pray in the church prayer meeting for the children of the church. You may get more prayer than anybody. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I have to go back and kind of check. But all, the, all of you, all of you 12, 11 years and younger, you don't know how much the church prays for you. And then those of you who are teenagers may not realize how much the church prayed for you when you were under less than 11 or 12. Oh, we love the children. And even you can have a part in turning the age for the Lord. And then finally, David. Finally, David, this young boy, so simple there, doing his job in, in the, in, with the sheep. And the Lord chose him, anointed him. He suffered, learned lessons. He followed his conscience. And then the Lord raised him up. Young people, I just want to read these two, two verses to you um, concerning, concerning David. We don't have time to, to really to develop anything, but uh, I, I just want to say that this is from Acts 13. Acts 13, 22. It says, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man according to my heart. Do you know a teenager can be a person according to God's heart? And then in the same chapter, verse 36 says, now David having served his own generation by the counsel of God. Young people, you can serve your generation. All the high schoolers, all the college students, you can serve your generation by the counsel of God. You know, it, in these past few years, I've noticed more young people have been stirred up for social causes. You know, that's something that we haven't seen quite like this since the 1970s and 60s. That was very common at, during that time. Young people rising up for, for what they feel is the betterment of society. And granted, a number of those causes are, are, are good. But, but here is something particular. Young people, do you know you can serve your generation by the counsel of God? That's serving in the highest way, in the highest way. Actually, by being involved in the church life and being burdened for the gospel in whatever school the Lord has sown you into, you can serve your generation. So I pray the Lord would raise up many Hannahs, many Samuels, and many Davids among us. I thank the Lord that, that we have gone through that study and we will get into it with more. That's for today. That's for now. So anyway, I'll just, I'll stop here. How about we have some prayers and then uh, I think a couple of the brothers may still want to share a brief word. Let's have some prayers. Amen. 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 So where Ricky was talking about first and second Samuel mm -hmm. and how the Lord used Hannah and Samuel and David. But from another point of view, from another aspect, in first and second Samuel, I found a phrase that was so helpful to me. You know, when the days are difficult, like now, when 
everything seems to be a problem. We need to catch this little phrase that you find in the life studies of 1st and 2nd Samuel. What is that little phrase? That little phrase is that God helps his people in a way. Oh, this is so, so helpful. Otherwise, you say, look at our situation, how we're doing this, this, that, well, where's God? God works in a hidden way. He doesn't advertise. But God, never forget, is a God of purpose. He accomplishes his purpose in a hidden way. And I would just like to give you one example of how the Lord worked in a hidden way with us. And I would like to mention to you about Brother James Chu. I'm not exalting Brother James, I'm just showing you how the Lord used him, but again, in a hidden way. Brother James found out he had cancer, and I don't know why, how he thought he would die. So that changed him radically. He was concerned for the church, concerned for the saints. And Brother Ricky talked about banners. Who started the banners? Brother James. It, it was unbelievable. Not that he was desperate, but it seemed like he was always active, trying to cooperate with the Lord. So what happened? The Lord used him in such a way. Those banners kind of made us rise up. It was such a help. So we need to be aware. The Lord is not sleeping. The Lord is not hidden. But to us, we should see what he's doing. If we don't see anything, ask the Lord, Lord, what are you doing now? Because we need to be encouraged in the midst of everything being against the Lord. So this was such a help. And we need to be reminded that God knows everything. You know, as I was preparing, I went over the history of all the meeting halls. And the Lord said, we don't need that. The Lord knew <laughs> that you would bring it up. Then I thought, oh, but this burden of being thankful of appreciating what the Lord is doing. Oh, well, the saints won't, won't pick it up. Uh, we, we need to pray. The Lord said again, don't pray. He knew that we would pray before I spoke. So, so we need to be so aware that the Lord is moving in hidden ways. How we praise the Lord for this. My burden is, Twofold. Number one, to thank the Lord for what he has done in the past and what he's doing now. This is my burden that we would realize what the Lord is doing. And realizing what the Lord is doing, we would be thankful. We would be appreciative 
of what the Lord is doing. So, okay, so we see that the Lord really blessed the church in such a marvelous way. So someone would, might say, why did, why did the Lord do that? Others would naturally say, well, it's the church, is his church, so surely he'll take care of it. But you know what? Actually, yes, the church is the Lord's church, but the thing is that we find this in Ephesians, Ephesians 2.22 tells us, Ephesians 2.22 tells us why God helped the church. We need to realize that God is sovereign. And in Ephesians 4.22, and he subjected all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things, over all things, to the church. So the Lord is the head of the church. Therefore, for the Lord to help the church, the church has to be in subjection to him as the head and also be what the Lord expects it to be. And that's why I was so helped by the history of the history of uh, all the nine meeting halls. So on the one hand, the Lord told me, no, don't, don't mention anything about the meeting halls. On the other hand, the Lord told me, well, if you want to show how the Lord has blessed the church, just give the saints the numbers from the annual business meeting we just had. And I will just say this much. Donations increased 45%. We just purchased two meeting halls. Before, we never, ever purchased two meeting halls at once. We were not able. Support for the Lord's work in the USA increased 200%. Support for the global Lord's work increased 100%. Okay, so then it is pretty obvious that the Lord has helped us. Why did the Lord help us? If we look into the word Again, in Ephesians, in Ephesians 4.1, it tells us, I beseech you, therefore, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called. The Lord is concerned how we walk in our daily walk. So this verse charges us concerning the living and responsibility of us, of the church. The living and responsibility of the church, that what the church should be on the earth. In walking worthily of the Lord's calling to have the proper body church life, we need firstly to take care of the matter of the oneness. Brothers and sisters, 
of all the things I appreciate the Lord for doing. The very first one, the very most important one, is the oneness. You know, humanly speaking, we're all different. <laughs> and in our own mind, it's impossible for us to be one. But I can testify from my experience personally, since the three of us, James, Benjamin, and I, were serving, even then, we were all one. Amen. And the other day in a meeting, Brother Ricky showed how surprised he was. We have one appointed elders, and the rest are elders, but they've never been nominated. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is, we are one. This is marvelous. This is the Lord's doing, and how we need to keep this, the oneness in the church. This is crucial. Ephesians 1, 3, being diligent to keep the oneness of the Spirit Amen. in the uniting bond of peace. Amen. Of course, the oneness of the Spirit is the Spirit himself. How we need to be exercised in our spirit. The oneness is not anything apart from the Spirit. It is the Spirit himself. So keeping the oneness is staying in the spirit. Amen. But in addition, we need a little more. Ephesians 4, 2. With all lowliness and meekness, Amen. with long suffering, bearing one another in love. Amen. How we need this. This is a way to keep the oneness of the spirit in our behavior, to have a proper humanity, a humanity with lowness, with meekness, with long suffering, a humanity that bears others in love. If we don't have such a humanity as our capital, there's no way we can involve in the business of keeping the oneness. So, on the one hand, God has worked in the church in a hidden way. On the other hand, the Lord has worked in us also so that we would be acceptable to the Lord, so that we would cooperate with the Lord. How we thank the Lord for this. So if we would keep the oneness, we must have the proper humanity. By having the humanity of the resurrected Christ, we spontaneously have the virtues required to keep the oneness of the Spirit. And then verse 3 speaks of keeping the oneness of the Spirit in the uniting bond of peace. God worked in a hidden way in the Old Testament, eventually, in the Lord's death and resurrection, the law was put aside. The law, with all its observances, with all its restrictions, was put aside. And nowadays, whether Gentile or not Gentile, whether Gentile or Jew, we're all one in the Lord. Amen. So let's keep that oneness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's close with uh, a few prayers. Can we have a few prayers of thanksgiving for what the Lord has done and a few prayers for our going on, what the Lord has shown us. Let's just have, end with a few prayers. Amen.